Hello bakers! Welcome to Runners Up Week Part 2. Uh, this week, chocolate peanut butter cupcakes. Three out of the four runners up in the runners up poll tied. And so we're doing them back to back, week after week. Um, so this week is chocolate peanut butter cupcakes and I'm stoked about them. The thing is, you guys already know how to make the chocolate cake. That was week three, s'mores. So I will link uh, to that video in the recipe on the blog today. Um, but what this will be an instruction in is Swiss meringue buttercream, my favorite type of buttercream. It is a Swiss meringue, a meringue base, so it is egg white based. Um, and you're going to need a stand mixer for, the, for this, I recommend. And if you don't want to do peanut butter, I'll show you how to flavor this. So you can flavor it way at the end. Um, you can just do a vanilla. You could actually, you can add a couple different types of extracts. So you can really play around with this. Swiss meringue is much more versatile than it may seem. So let's get started. I've got a very shoddy double boiler set up here. I realize I don't have a pot anymore that fits my mixer bowl nicely. And the easiest way to do this is to put it directly into your mixer bowl. So um, five egg whites in here already. And this is a pot with water in it. And so the point is to use the steam to gently heat the egg whites. And what goes into the egg whites is some sugar. It's one and a quarter cups sugar. And then you're going to get a whisk ready and put it over medium heat. The first thing you want to do is just really incorporate it together. You want it to be smooth. Now at this point, it doesn't need very much attention. Uh, the dangers here are the egg white cooking on the outside. And also you're looking for the sugar to dissolve. And so it's good to agitate it a little. That's why we have a whisk, but this can take some time. Now, a lot of Swiss meringue recipes call for a candy thermometer um, to figure out at what point you need to pull it off. This recipe doesn't. I have uh, and this is how I always make Swiss meringue buttercream. I never use a thermometer. And this method might not work for everyone, so I, I have sort of a theory on that. Um, it is ready once the sugar is dissolved. Uh, and the way that I test that is I put just my thumb and, and pointer finger into the mixture and I just rub it between my fingers. I put it in, I pull it back out, and I say, hmm, nope, nope, there's sugar granules, gotta keep going on the double boiler. There is also this little bit where if it's just on the verge of burning my fingers, if I say, ooh, that's just a little bit painful and there are no sugar granules, that's my personal actual method of testing when this is done. Um, it's like my body knows the temperature um, is just past painful. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending you do it that way. If you're brave and you want to sort of see what it feels like, by all means, I will do that in this video. The other way is just to take a spoon, um, dip it in, you can let it cool for a few seconds, and then you can just feel whatever is on the spoon. And no sugar granule will escape you on that. So don't worry too much. One thing you can do while this is heating up, I would recommend getting your butter out. Now, I have a personal preference of using salted butter in this recipe. I use a little bit of unsalted and a little bit of salted. Um, so it's one and a half cups butter. I use a third salted. So in this recipe, I use a half cup salted butter and one cup unsalted butter. And pulling it out now, it's not necessary for it to be at room temperature, but um, I've noticed the buttercream comes together a little bit more quickly if it is already at room temperature. And I have a fix for that too, if you've got super cold butter. I didn't pull mine out um, very early on. Um, I'll show you what I do when I incorporate it into our buttercream. Rather, into our meringue, because that butter is what makes this buttercream. It ain't called burr pastry shop for nothing, which is actually the, just in case I haven't said that. Because I feel like I'm bastardizing the word the. If it must be said, I have the utmost respect for butter. Because this is a Swiss meringue first and foremost. Uh, we have made a French meringue. We made that in our souffle week. 
Um, technically, French meringue is just sugar beaten into egg whites slowly until it's incorporated. We made an Italian meringue on week three, which was the S'mores Cupcakes week. Um, and that is where we made a sugar syrup and then slowly poured that sugar syrup into beating egg whites. And this is a Swiss meringue. Also involves heat, but instead we're heating the egg whites and the sugar. I don't know if there are more than three types of meringue. I always thought there were only three. With your steam mixer, you do want the whisk attachment. Um, you can attempt this by hand. We are beating this to stiff peaks, ish, very glossy peaks at the very least. So um, I don't know about incorporating the butter by hand either. I would recommend a stand mixer today. And I, I, I think a hand mixer would work. Um, this is just for our meringue. We're actually going to switch to the paddle attachment. This guy, once we're beating in the butter. I should say this, the medium heat, it's just to get it started. If your water starts to boil, you, you're going to want to turn it down. I like to get the heat up there and then maintain it. And I will, I'm smelling this, I will check my mixture right now. Cold, I was going to say is a bone, and I don't think that that's a phrase. This is one of those things that I think like cooking is easier than people think. You just, you can't get caught up in those details you have to have. Like when people say you have to have a rubber whisk for this. I can't even think of an example. You don't need a solid double boiler for this. You can build a double boiler, which is what I'm doing right now in front of you. I'm losing so much steam around the edges of the bowl that aren't covered. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna deal with it. Stay in there, Pete. Can you believe you're watching me make a double boiler? What type of instructional video is this? While that heats up, we can talk peanut butter. Um, I put, this is crazy, I know, oh, an entire cup of peanut butter into this. It's my recommendation, you can do it by taste. You can just put a tablespoon of peanut butter um, if that's how you like your peanut butter buttercream. Uh, I put in actually 232 grams is my measurement for uh, my weight for one cup of peanut butter. And I'm not sure if you've seen it, but cups do vary. Alton Brown, the chef Alton Brown, um, or food scientist, he recently, maybe during quarantine, did an experiment and just showed how much cups vary. He's a huge advocate for weighing all of your recipes. In, so am I, by the way. Though I did, uh, I, I don't, I don't weigh all my recipes, but I did read something that was really enlightening if you are thinking of, you know, turning your, you know, family tradition of like this recipe and it's very sacred to you. If you want to write it down right, or any recipe, I don't know why it has to be super special. I use Skippy's Natural, by the way. There is added sugar in this, so this is a sweetened peanut butter. But it is just palm oil and peanuts and I like that. Anyways, if you are transferring your recipes to weight, make sure that you weigh it by yourself. I would not recommend you look up like what is one cup of flour in grams because you've been doing this recipe for X amount of time or it's been in your family for generations. Um, you've been making it one way the whole time, measure that. So then you can record by recipe what it is. If you've been scooping the flour like this and maybe it's a little heavier than an average cup of flour, um, then that's the amount you want because that's how the recipe works. So as this has been heating up, I got my peanut butter together. That's one cup, 232 grams. Um, I got my butter together, the half a cup unsalted and one cup, um, half a cup salted, one cup unsalted. I got it all cubed up. And the other ingredients you need in this recipe, salt, if you want, I recommend it. And a vanilla extract, also optional, I recommend it. I make sure that all of my Swiss meringue buttercream start as vanilla and then I flavor from there, because I think vanilla makes everything better. I'm gonna move my stand mixer over so we can go straight into beating these egg whites as soon as they're ready. It's not, you know, an urgent thing, but might as well be prepared. This is the mise en place I talk about all the time. Mise en place is just getting everything in its place, weighing out your peanut butter, 
I actually think it's my double boiler, so make sure you're checking more often than I am. This makeshift thing is not <laughs> fantastic. It does smell like cooking with egg whites and sugar. It smells like a meringue. I will be honest, when this mixture cooks, it always smells like a dog to me. If anyone else feels that way, please let me know. Uh, it's the first time I've admitted it and I've decided to admit it publicly. Once this is ready, let's talk about what happens next. The whole bowl is going onto our stand mixer and we're gonna beat this sucker until the bottom of the bowl is cool, so it's no longer warm. That's a huge important piece. And of course it should be glossy and, and stiff and thick um, or meringue. At that point, once the bowl is cool, and that's because it'll melt our butter otherwise, um, I like to, some people make Swiss meringue exclusively with a whisk attachment. I like to switch to the paddle and, and I don't worry, don't forget, I know it sounds like the wrong thing to do with meringue, um, but you're beating the butter in no matter what. So we're gonna whip this and then we're gonna attach the paddle instead, beat in the butter, and then there's this process. And the way it goes is the meringue, the, the meringue buttercream, it breaks, it curdles, it gets ugly, uh, it tests your confidence in yourself as a baker. And all you need to know is that that meringue is coming back together. It's just fooling you. It's just messing with you. And don't believe it, don't fall for it. Don't fall for the Swiss meringue buttercream. It comes together every time. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but it's going to happen if you have leftovers, that is going to happen every time you re-beat your buttercream. It's always gonna break. Don't throw it out. That's my biggest tip, don't throw it out. I have before, um, when I was working at, technically the, the bakery I worked at, that was actually very close to where I live now, and I didn't live around here then. Um, it was technically a cupcake shop, though they did a whole big display of different baked goods and pastries. Um, I remember making, there's only one cupcake with Swiss meringue buttercream and it involved a raspberry jam. And I remember every time I'd show the owner who was started it as a pastry chef um, and being like, oh, like it broke. And so it sort of became this thing where we'd throw out that, if we had leftovers of that buttercream, we'd toss them. If only I had known then what I know now, which is it always comes back together. And at some point, someone actually who uh, became a baker while I was there, heated the bowl with a blowtorch and it helped it come back together. Isn't that interesting? When it comes out of the fridge, you've got to heat it up. You've got to give it a chance. It's, you know, all the butter is sort of solidified again and you've just got to give it a chance. I don't heat, I don't ever use a blowtorch when I uh, whip up leftover Swiss meringue buttercream. I don't do it now, but we know we can have faith in the fact that it will come back together. Now, after that whole tirade, it's probably overcooked. Let's see. It's not overcooked. It's not there yet. My sugar is dissolved, so I'm just waiting this, for this to heat up enough. Just to be clear, it's not like an incredibly painful thing. It's just like, it feels like a pinch maybe, you know, or a nice cut. Nice cut being with a sharp blade. None of this sounds good. Dull blades are a little bit more dangerous in terms of a blunt force because a sharp blade will cut you and that cut will be very clean, but a dull blade can bruise as well. You know what I mean? There's all this stuff about it. I mean like a nice knife cut, I meant like a clean cut with a sharp blade where it pinches and it stings a little, but you're okay, you know what I mean? You get your new skin. The, that's a brand of that liquid, like adhesive that you can put on cuts. And if yours is frothing a lot, that's okay. You're, you're essentially beating your egg whites. Also, honestly, I typically don't give it this much attention. You can have this going while you're making cupcakes. You know what I mean? Just make sure you don't overcook it and that the egg whites don't cook separately, which might is what might happen around the ring of the, the top layer, just around the ring of the bowl, that could happen. Can you guess where this is from? 
I actually don't remember. I think it's St. Petersburg. Oh my gosh, mom. I was there with my mom and my brother. Let me know. I'm pretty sure it was, I'm pretty sure it was St. Petersburg. Isn't it cute though? I don't know if you can see the whole thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is it. This is it. You're done with your whisk. You can remove your fake double boiler and take your maybe hot pot and put it onto your stand mixer right away. Meaning you don't have to wait. And I have just a little bit of sugar that's caught on the side of the bowl. That, that's gonna happen. It's almost impossible for it not to. Now, whip it. Oh, as soon as it's glossy, the bowl is cool. Remember that factor. Um, and it's stiff like this, you are ready to go. So what we're gonna do is switch to the paddle attachment and beat in our butter just one cube at a time. Um, my recommendation is as you put it in, if it's a little bit cold or a little bit hard, actually squish it between your fingers and then throw it in. And it's just one cube at a time every few seconds. Okay, I don't know if it worked, but I was trying to, oh my goodness, it's just my favorite type of buttercream. I was trying to give you a view of what it looks like as it curls and comes back, and this actually went very quick for me today. It's a little bit warmer, and I think that might actually help. Okay. But I just want to, I want to give you a look at up close view of this, and now we're not done with our paddle, but this is silky and smooth, and oh, you already just want to dive in. So now comes the flavorings and this is totally up to you i was just i chose chocolate peanut butter cupcakes so that's what i'm making today and that's going to be one cup of peanut butter 232 grams um i'm going to also add in my vanilla extract now now for vanilla swiss ring buttercream i'd add in probably two teaspoons i'm going to add in one teaspoon and then i'm going to add in the peanut butter let's do it just so you know i always like to allow just a little bit of time um, between add-ins, just, just to give it a chance. And this is also the time to put in your salt too, quarter teaspoon, just a little bit. We have that salted butter helping. Right. Now the vanilla extract. And then again, I don't just throw this peanut butter in, I give it some time to mix in properly. recipes we're going to want to scrape down the sides of the bowl you want this fully incorporated you can see it's turned sort of a pale a tan indicating we've added the peanut butter it is so silky smooth can you see this oh it's just so good. Now we just have to pipe it. 
And just for a second to talk about mm, the flavor of this. Um, it is sweet, not as sweet as an American buttercream, which is why I like this, and this is a lot smoother. Um, but it's got strong peanut butter flavor. If I haven't tried using an unsweetened peanut butter, but if you want it to be a little less sweet, just use a, an unsweetened peanut butter or a peanut butter that has less sugar. Okay, I'm gonna pipe our buttercream on, and then I have a little surprise in each of these. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. I put a little Reese's cup at the bottom. You can actually pour in your batter and then push your Reese's cup down, but I wanted it to sit at the bottom this time. It gets really soft inside of the cupcake batter and it just tastes amazing. And whatever you don't pipe, this is my recommended way of storing it. Um, storaging it, storing it. Uh, I would put it directly on plastic wrap, which is what I'm doing now. Just any leftover buttercream. I didn't frost very many cupcakes. And I'll show you what sort of, I call it a packet, what this little packet looks like. And of course I have a large uh, plastic wrap at home, but you can also just, what you want is for the air to not get to your buttercream. You want it um, as airtight as possible. So you can put it in a container. Um, I would put plastic wrap in the bottom of the container and then wrap it up. And so I just, I just store it like this in the fridge. Um, when you want to use it, you just beat it back together and it'll do the curdle and then you'll have more buttercream. Hey guys, chocolate peanut butter cupcakes.